Um, next up we have uh, Jerry Chu, who's going to talk a little bit about some of the experiences um, with Open vSwitch, uh, both implementation and, I guess, deployment. So here's Jerry. Um, hi. Uh, sorry for some technical uh, heat. Um, uh, first, uh, first of all, you know, a uh, bit of a disclaimer. I'm uh, myself. I'm uh, relatively latecomer to OVS. Uh, I, you know, got involved uh, less than a year ago. I'm also relatively new to virtualization. Um, so some of the stuff, you know, I, I will, you know, if you, well, I will show you slides. You know, I have a lot of the, you know, the, the good and bad and ugly. You know, loneliness of uh, bad and ugly, not a lot of good. But actually, OVS, I think I have a very positive experience. <laughs> Um, and also, some of the bad part, um, I, um, you know, uh, again, you guys probably, you know, many of you probably know uh, OVS uh, history and uh, the latest architecture, the architecture and latest code uh, better than I. You know, I, I've been playing catch up, having followed very closely to the open, uh, uh, open .org. Um So some of the bad actually has been fixed or are being actively fixed. Uh, I just noticed this recently. And um, uh, before I start, I wanted to actually uh, make sure that, you know, our, although I'm the one who's presenting the slides, uh, much of the work has been done by my colleague uh, Bill Summerfield, working on the kernel, and uh, Jing Ai uh, and his team on the user side, and Patrick has done a lot of test uh, framework setup. So first, uh, the good. Uh, so it basically it works. Uh, when I uh, got the, you know, download the OVS, uh, the, the user kernel, and uh, you know, set it up uh, last year, late last year, you know, um, you know, it's pretty easy to use. There, there's this uh, L2 uh, learning mode that doesn't require a control plan. So you know, I got up and running very, fairly quickly. And um, you know, uh, recently I checked the recent code base uh, the, uh, on the upstream OV, open org. Uh, it, it supports more and more encapsulation protocol. It has a lot of features uh, being added in the past year. Um, and uh, one question I have is, um, the, I think the o OVS, if I'm correct, yeah, it's pretty much uh, married with uh, OpenFlow, right? Um, and OpenFlow is uh, maybe, uh, may maybe one of the the most uh, dominant control plane protocol, or there are a few alternatives. But one alternative uh, that, well, at least the alternative effort outside of OpenStack and OpenFlow is happening in IETF. So my question to the audience is, you know, if IETF come up with something different, uh, the NVO3 working group, I don't know if anybody is involved in that working group at IETF? Okay. Um, they are doing something from ground up. Um, and if they do come up with something new, I wonder if the OVS can you know, be uh, adapted to a new control plan protocol. And also, um, you know, OVS performance is reasonable, I, th I would say reasonable. Um, the latency performance, if I just measured how much the uh, OVS kernel module um, Assuming you know, the flow setup has, has been done, the module itself introduced in terms of latency. Oops. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I can continue to talk. The, it, it's uh, less than 10%, uh, pretty good, but I have to keep tapping, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, the less than 10%. Uh, super difference, super performance is another story. Uh, pretty much super tied to all the offloads, you know, software optimization. Um, so um, you know, I have a later number showing the, uh, uh, what, what, what I had got recently. Now it goes to the bad. Okay. Um, so um, basically, you know, it seems like there are two, well, so most of the Linux kernel guys work on the upstream kernel from you know, kernel.org and various uh, Git. Um, but OVS um, 
actually has its own, the most recent changes are in the openresearch.org. And uh, I have been wondering uh, why, you know, I, I kind of, you know, number of reasons I can guess, you know, maybe uh, openresearch.org is uh, kind of staging a repository or, uh, you know, since it can be, uh, you know, so me and, huh? Uh -huh. Okay, but it would be nice to have a single repository, right, the most updated. Uh, and I do notice recently, for example, the, um, the tunneling code uh, showed up a couple months ago, right? That's uh, you know, good news. Yeah, but it's still a lot of uh, uh, features, right? They, so it's also, you know, openvc.org is kind of staging before, because open, you know, kernel.org, you know, it's not really controlled, you know, by, right? by the people here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So user kernel dependencies, right? I, I, maybe the, the new, this part, you know, user kernel dependency is a uh, issue that one has to manage for any of the system, you know, feature uh, involving a tool in the user space. Um, and uh, um, so uh, next bully item is the first uh, feature we added, uh, you know, actually Bill added um, when we were we started with uh, 1.7.1, and uh, we you may notice that the uh, the way the uh, tunnel setup is it required one vPort per traditional IP tunnel, meaning the uh, you know the source that, uh, or the local remote IP address, and it doesn't scale with uh, if you have many remote hosts. So we fixed that. We create something called dynamic tunneling, um, and you know the semantic is here the you know, one vPort per GRE key. Um, and then, you know, and also we, we um, this is uh, the way we done it, you know, with uh, one GRE key per vPort uh, is important for resource isolation, preventing DOS attack from, uh, you know, uh, different uh, traffic from different uh, virtual network. Um, then the Bill and I noticed recently that the, uh, uh, the newer uh, you know, code from the openvc.org actually introduce something called flow-based uh, tunneling. Um, and uh, we are sort of in the middle of trying to figure out, you know, what, they are, what are the differences and how do we, uh, how, you know, how do we combine or merge or whatever, right? Um, Um, I have not had not, not yet had a chance to evaluate the difference, and I think it's there, it. Uh, I think high level, it looks very very comparable, but I haven't haven't dug into the detail, and I suspect there are a little a few tweaks we could probably make to the flow based tunneling for, to make it better for us. Uh, so the next thing about the you know the one we wanted wanted to improve is the flow setup overhead, which is. I noticed on the main list, you know, uh, seems like everybody is aware of this, and um, there been a lot of effort. Well, unfortunately, I only noticed it recently um, uh, in the upstream. So what we did is, you know, we we um, we we actually um, uh, noticed this problem from two uh, aspects. One is, you know, we we immediately, you know, so the the you know the the old the the one dot uh, 701 based uh, kernel, uh, you know, the, the flow table is a uh, um, full match uh, based on five, top, five tuple. And so uh, every new flow TCP connection will require, will, will miss the uh, kernel cache and will require up call and go to, you know, flow setup of all the overhead. And uh, we all know that the HTTP, you know, as a protocol, you know, is a usually sharply connection, right? So 
this doesn't fly well with uh, the, this, that kind of protocol. And uh, another issue is the, it, it actually open up the DOS attack if somebody DOS you with uh, many, many different uh, file tuples. Um, so this showed up in also the benchmark the TCBCR. I think the you know, upstream also people folks discuss uh, try to measure using the CRR and uh, you know with uh, uh, L4 match, uh, full match. You know the uh, if I measured uh, uh, without the VM, only in the tab going through OVS versus the um, IP tunnel, and um, it's like 10 percent uh, the performance of the native. Um, so the solution we uh, came up with uh, was uh, we, we have special mode to uh, add the LC, LC table uh, flow match in the kernel. Um, then, you know, Bill and I noticed, you know, there's this mega flow introduced in the recent um, upstreams. So we uh, will have to understand um, how does that work and how does it fit with our need. Yeah, you also left out the other little embarrassing thing when this, when we actually hooked this up to our guests, we were seeing more like, was it 1K flows? Yeah, 1K flows per section because the guests had uh, connection tracking compiled in and uh, some interaction between that and, and all the other pieces slowed, slowed them way down. <laughs> so all kinds of ways to screw yourself here. So, so that, that was our own issue in a sense, right? Um, connection tracking is known to be unpleasant for the most part. I'm wondering, in the OVS case, is that built in? Um, can we get around that? In the Linux case, I believe Eric actually has some fixes um, in the stack case to make connection tracking more reasonable. So I don't know if those have been accepted, but we would want those to get accepted. So connection tracking is like insidious and I think that when it slips in, um, you know, tracking anything at L4 we have to create a state per connection in addition to the TCP states. That in itself is so sort of expensive. Um, but the other point here is this was, a, this is the CRR, which is the test that's doing connection setup and teardown at a rapid rate, kind of emulating a web server. This is not slow path for us. This is, has to be considered part of the fast path. We can't have this slow. So a 90% performance hit obviously is something that we have to address. So we'll talk about that this afternoon then? Okay, great. Yeah, yeah and it turned out the, the connection tracking thing was because of a a policy, a separate policy where they didn't want any loadable modules in the guests, so they had to compile all the features in the base kernel. And for connection tracking, being compiled in turns you on, and, and which is also a bad idea, but that's a whole other story. Also, my, uh, I have a, um, I, I have an impression that the L3, what we did, the full, we have to do full uh, five tuple match in the kernel to be open flow compiling. Because uh, you know, user can specify you know any kind of, you know. So this is like this the um, denominator, common denominator. Yeah, the 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 L three only flow thing I did as a prototype was essentially just to evaluate you know what the what the performance delta was, um, and we were, we we kept that in reserve in case it was needed for, in performance in our our, our early deployments. Uh, it turns out it, it hasn't been so far, but it's something we're keeping an eye on. We want to, we want to pick up multi uh, mega flows. Yeah, yeah so no, yeah. Yeah, so, so, so in a way, in order to be compliant, my, my, maybe one have to detect, right? The, if the user configuration SDN is only L3, use, using L3, and once they configure L4 uh, uh, mode or rule, you have to disable L3 and go to L4 dynamically, right?
I've, I have slides later, you know, we want to actually match for Gumbo TCP flags, but, you know, so make the whole thing uh, more messier. Uh, okay, so um, ideas about, we also have ideas about, you know, uh, how to speed up flow setup. Basically, can we uh, invent a, a better, a more efficient interface for the replacing that link? But there, I have some claim that netlink is not the issue, so I'm not sure. Um, also, you know, we created multiple netlink sockets, and uh, I noticed you know, the, there's been uh, active work going on uh, to modify uh, V3CD. Uh, that, that work, so nice to meet you, uh, Jesse. I just noticed <laughs> your name. Um, is that work uh, completely or not still going? Uh, okay. But actually, 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 it's been multi-sided. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, so next is the another thing. Um, I noticed actually I got caught by this uh, PM uh, pattern you discovery uh, was uh, deprecated. Um, and at some point, uh, I was oh, I was downloading latest um, uh, openvistory.org uh, bits and uh, trying to uh, test on the new latest option Linux kernel. And then I got by by this, you know, this uh, fragment bit is not set, and the Python discovery no longer is no longer there. My performance number was not good. I didn't notice until a couple of weeks later. It's all fragment uh, packets. Um, and number of this passing view discovery is really important, um, especially for testing, right? There are a lot of people who are outside the kernel lane or whatever, they don't know or uh, forget to manually lower the interface into you. Uh, so I wonder, you know, I, I went to the main archive, I saw somebody or maybe Jesse or somebody said, well, you know, why we duplicate passing D is because it doesn't work very reliably and we can simplify the code. But personally, I, I think this is a very important feature. It doesn't need to be reliable. You know, IP packet is not reliable, but you know, eventually it will gather, you know, get the ICMP back to the TCP connection. Yeah, well. Uh, oh. um, so, yeah, I don't think that the, the goal uh, I think definitely having some way of automatically adjusting the MTU uh, is still a reasonable one. The reason why path MTU discovery specifically was deprecated is because it was kind of a, it was a hack, to be honest. Um, it, it, because it was essentially doing L3 path MTU discovery on L2, which is... <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it did work. Um, but I mean, so my hope is that there's more, I guess, standards compliant or, or normal ways of doing it, either through things like MSS clamping or, um, <laughs> I, I mean, you think that that's messier than I think this? Yeah, MSS clamping is messier in some ways. It, it interferes with anything that's potentially doing uh, packet checksums. Uh, as, in, as secure checksums, of, or, a, ver, of, there, there are a bunch of. The goal is to that. have this automatic, yeah. right? Right. Um, so I don't know what. The, yeah. Also, MSS clamping doesn't work for anything except TCP. MTU discovery is, is for IP. MSS clamping is not automatic, right? It's manual, right? Um, no, it's, 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 it's automatic. It, it rewrites. Okay. For a TCP packet, it should effectively end up at the same result as well. Okay. Um, mm. so, but yeah, it definitely only applies to TCP and not hierarchies. Okay. So, um, so, so anyways, I mean, so I, I was the one that originally processed things, the one that I think moved it, so I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. so, so you so, need so, to find it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so TTL is. Uh, so TTL is another thing we notice uh, actually more in line of uh, the DOS attack. Uh, so you know somebody can use the same file tuple, but uh, you know just tweaking or vary the TTL then create a lot of more flow entries, right? For the same actually same file tuple. Um, you know I wonder what what is history, but I notice the open uh, open flow spec has that thing in, so maybe it's for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it does but it doesn't need to be in the match key. It need to be inherited. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so some of the DOS attack, uh, the issue uh, has gone has gone away uh, thanks to the Megaflow introduced recently. Um, so what what I uh, oh another issue we noticed was the GSO packet um, on the first miss, right? GSO, GSO packet will get fragmented uh, before sending out. So we were trying to fix this because you know the. You know, up to 64K, so it's up to 40 some packets um, getting up call, right? Um, and we were a little worried about, especially for UDP, somebody, if you, you know, I, I don't remember the current code support UFO. If it does, right, then somebody can do a UDP attack on the large packet and then, you know, generate a magn uh, magnification effect because they could cause 40 some, you know, mouth call and packet going up. Um, and uh, traffic isolation. So we uh, we were wondering what is the strategy for us. Uh, we can use a different uh, separate data path or OVS instance. Uh, eventually, we offer uh, one NetLink socket per V port, and uh, on the ingress side for GRE, we have one V port per GRE key. And Uh, and, you know, at the same time, we can re, uh, apply some rate control, but then uh, there was a discussion internally about you know, re applying uh, at the user level or kernel, uh, user, uh, kernel level, you know, there's a trade-off uh, between them. And, Yeah, so uh, now to move to the ugly part. Uh, so the ugly means the, it, it can sort of make it work, but it's really ugly. Actually, it doesn't fit. So uh, we have a requirement uh, for, to use OVS, we need to have a firewall net support. Um, so um, I actually spent almost a, more than a month trying to retrofit the IP tables, uh, net filter, uh, to work with the OVS kernel, and uh, it's ugly. Um, I think it just, uh, actually it doesn't fit the interface um, between the two are not the same, and uh, moreover, the, the I discovered I was uh, rather new to, I never look at IP table code, kernel code. Then after a while I realized, you know, okay, so I actually got the stateless part, the you know, simple um, NAT or something working, but then when I try to do content tracking, the kernel crashed right away. Then I realized it has a dependency on IP stack. It has this, you know, uh, 
reliance on the IP uh, raw entry or something. Then I want to look at the, how does the IP, uh, the Linux bridge and EB tables work on Linux bridge. And I notice there's a really ugly hack. They fake up some structure in order for this not to crash. Um, so, um, you know, uh, from this conference, uh, hopefully we uh, got the stakeholder together to figure out, you know, if there's any hope for this, you know, to actually have native support inside OVS kernel for the NAT uh, firewall. Uh, our, uh, we have actually a requirement internally to support us. So another approach people brought up was to um, allow match uh, in the kernel on the TCP flag. And then I went to look at uh, the latest code uh, with uh, the uh, Megaflow. It doesn't seem to have extended the software uh, key, uh, the, the key. Um, so it's, the key is still not including uh, the header, uh, the, sorry, the TCP flag. Right? Moreover, it looks like there's a res uh, restriction in the key, uh, the mask, sorry, the mask has to be contiguous, right? So the, this may be because the, I don't know, the matching uh, need to be, the lookup need to be very efficient in the kernel. I, I don't know, we can find out the reason. Uh, okay. Um, and the second one, well, I guess I'm, uh, how much time? A couple minutes more? So the GRE, uh, I also, um, find out, you know, it kind of doesn't fit with uh, the other features, nice feature from the option kernel. Uh, so Eric Tumanzak, uh, well, so GRE, uh, GRO code is there. GRO uh, stack support the general U uh, TCP UDP pa package, but doesn't, uh, I didn't support GRE package until Eric uh, here um, added support. But I, when I look at very closely, I re realized he did the aggregation after the GRE D decap. And then I realized I cannot apply that to OVS. It just doesn't match. Uh, but the good news is I actually spent a couple weeks fix. So this has been fixed. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, I have great numbers, a performance number. So this is GRO. Uh, GRE support, so basically uh, uh, the GRO stack will recognize the whole GRE packet and try to aggregate. Um, and uh, hopefully I can s find the time to s send up strings as uh, soon as possible. Um, I have a um, few more, well, let's see. Uh, oh, I have a bunch of performance numbers and it relies on me uh, running, not having to run VM, so I uh, wrote this um, nice uh, simple utility that will, uh, I think there's some, probably some similar uh, thing than done before. This uh, will take the, uh, will twist two uh, uh, tab device together, so I actually can run uh, on the IP stack uh, on the same, uh, well, anyway, the diagram shows uh, how it works. So, yeah, I can use more minutes, but. Yeah, I'm sorry you could. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Yeah. Um, very interesting stuff. <laughs>